The largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter, has one of the most unpredictable climates. Beautiful photos of Jupiter reveal the planet to be covered entirely with striped, turbulent clouds. In actuality, storms are all over this planet. Some are only tiny, while others are enormous and could completely cover all of Earth. But the band's depth was unknown for a very long time. Recent research revealed that the stripes extended to a depth of 3,000 kilometers, which was remarkably deep. Additional research has shown that Jupiter is suffering devastating consequences and we are essentially clueless about why or what is actually happening. Jupiter is a mysterious planet that resists disclosing its secrets, which is why scientists have dedicated their time to discover what is actually going on. Why does the fluid inside it act as a solid body beneath the flows? Will Jupiter's massive storm ever subside? Will humans ever be able to thrive on this planet? Let's find out. By far the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter is more than twice as massive as all the other planets put together. Jupiter is the fifth planet from our Sun. The swirls and stripes of Jupiter are actually ammonia and water clouds floating in a hydrogen and helium atmosphere. Numerous moons orbit around Jupiter. Jupiter also has a number of rings, although they are much fainter and composed of dust rather than ice, unlike the well-known rings of Saturn. Jupiter has a radius that is 69,911 kilometers, that's 43,440.7 miles wider than Earth. Jupiter would be roughly the size of a basketball if Earth was the size of a nickel. Jupiter is 5.2 astronomical units AU from the Sun at an average distance of 484 million miles, that's 778 million kilometers. Sunlight travels from the Sun to Jupiter at this distance in 43 minutes. The solar system's shortest day is observed on Jupiter. The time it takes for Jupiter to rotate or spin once is just about 10 hours, and Jupiter completes one orbit of the Sun a year in Jovian time in around 12 Earth years, 4,333 Earth days. Only a 3-degree tilt is present between its equator and its orbital path around the Sun. As a result, Jupiter has a nearly upright rotation and less dramatic seasonal variations than other planets. Jupiter resembles a tiny solar system with its several smaller moons and four giant moons. Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto are Jupiter's four largest moons and are among our solar system's most fascinating places to visit. The solar system's most volcanically active body is Io. The largest moon in the solar system is Ganymede, even bigger than the planet Mercury. Little present surface activity is indicated by Callisto's few tiny craters. Under Europa's icy surface may lay a liquid water ocean with the necessary elements for life, making it an alluring location to study. Gravity drew spinning gas and dust to form Jupiter, a gas giant, when the rest of the solar system was forming some 4.5 billion years ago. The majority of the mass left over after the Sun formed was taken up by Jupiter, which now contains more than twice as much material as the other worlds put together in the solar system. By now, it's no news that Jupiter is a gas giant, hence it lacks a true surface. Mostly, gases and liquids are flowing around the planet. The surface of Jupiter resembles a patchwork of vibrant cloud bands and patches. The skies of the gas planet likely consist of three separate cloud layers that collectively measure roughly 44 miles or 71 kilometers. The bright hues you see throughout Jupiter may be plumes of gases, including sulfur and phosphorus, rising from the planet's heated center. Jupiter's spots can last for a very long time since there is no solid surface to slow them down. At the equator, some of the prevailing winds on stormy Jupiter 
can reach speeds of up to 335 miles per hour or 539 kilometers per hour. The Great Red Spot, the largest storm in Jupiter's atmosphere that has been raging in a counterclockwise swell for more than a century, is quite well known for its intense storms. The fabled storm is so large that it may engulf the entire planet. Astronomers have just learned that the storm extends farther into space than they had previously thought. Scientists discovered that Jupiter's storms go deep beneath its clouds and provide a clear view of the cloud interiors based on data from the Juno spacecraft. The greatest storm in the solar system, the Great Red Spot, is a high-pressure anticyclonic cyclone. More than 400 miles per hour is the counterclockwise rotational speed of the storm's clouds. Compared to Earth, a Category 4 hurricane's maximum wind speed is only 150 miles per hour. Imagine the destructive power the Great Red Spot possesses. In addition to that, several storms are present in Jupiter's atmosphere. In actuality, storms practically blanket the entire world. On the gas giant's planet, where there is no surface and the planet's internal heat mostly influences the weather, storms frequently linger for a long time. However, scientists have long held that Jupiter's storms are limited to the depths of the planet where sunlight can reach and where water is still able to condense. However, a recent study contradicted that. The researchers behind the new study examined the vertical structure of the Great Red Spot as well as two other storms on Jupiter, using information from NASA's Juno mission. Juno has been orbiting Jupiter every 53 days since it reached Jupiter's orbit in July 2016. The spacecraft looks under Jupiter's cloud tops using a variety of onboard instruments. The storms stretch below the level at which water condenses and clouds form, according to the data from Juno's microwave radiometer, which can see hundreds of miles deep inside the planet. While some of the storms, like the Great Red Spot, reach depths of 60 miles below the cloud tops, others reach depths of almost 200 miles. However, the surrounding jets that fuel the storm travel even further into the planet's atmosphere than the Great Red Spot itself. The Great Red Spot penetrates Jupiter's atmosphere for around 500 kilometers, but the surrounding jets are located at a depth of over 3,000 kilometers. On Earth, storm development is greatly influenced by water and sunlight, but it doesn't seem to be the case on Jupiter. These roots go down deeper and pass right through the water cloud like it doesn't even matter. Scott Bolton, principal investigator of Juno from the Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio said. And so how that works is going to require new modes and new ideas to explain. This suggests that there might be a link between the deep atmosphere of Jupiter and its interior. Why does it matter? Scientists are closely examining Jupiter since it may provide the answer to the solar system's creation tale. Its size is a key factor in being considered too. The size is one of the key reasons that it's really of high interest to us because it's so large and massive that it is thought to have formed first, Bolton said. So when we study Jupiter, we're taking a look at the very early part of the solar system. How did planets form? Where did we come from? How is our solar system made in general? The diagram of the solar system is widely recognized. The orbital trajectories of the planets around the Sun are indicated by visible circles. The truth is somewhat different. Because the star is so big, the gravitational center of the planets usually lies deep inside the Sun. Jupiter, however, is an enormous body in and of itself and has no connections to this solar point. Jupiter's mass is two and a half times that of other planets put together, just to give you an idea of how big this planet is. Instead of being inside the star, the gravitational center between the Sun and Jupiter is above it. 
Surprisingly, the Earth and the Sun both revolve around this center. The Sun, which is still the largest object in the solar system, is so close to this gravitational point that it almost doesn't seem to affect the star. On the other hand, Jupiter is a dwarf relative to the Sun and is also some distance from the Sun, putting it in conspicuous orbit. On the other hand, the Great Red Spot is akin to Jupiter's storm's paternal grandfather. It has been roving for a very long time, but we've recently seen a decrease in size. Does that imply that it will eventually vanish? Jupiter appears to be a massive striped ball that spins quickly. The clouds with light-colored stripes have rising air, whereas the clouds with dark-colored stripes have sinking air. On Jupiter, the contrasting pale and dark stripes are caused by winds that are moving in different directions. When this occurs, they have the ability to create large cyclones, much as how pushing and dragging a beach ball will cause it to spin. Humans have observed the Great Red Spot for at least 200 years and has been blowing powerful winds for practically the whole time. It can alter from day to day, just like any storm. It sometimes resembles a circle, other times an egg. Additionally, its color sometimes shifts from brownish red to pale red. It occasionally seems virtually white. But recently, researchers have found that the massive cyclone is getting smaller. The Great Red Spot was nearly three times bigger than it is now, about 100 years ago. So why is it reducing in size? It helps to first comprehend why cyclones on Earth weaken and eventually stop in order to comprehend why it is contracting. On Earth, cyclones frequently develop over warm, deep waters before migrating to land or a colder body of water. A cyclone's winds slow down when they come into contact with the solid ground and therefore the cyclone slows down. On Earth, cyclones are also affected by surrounding weather and winds, which can cause them to flake away in a matter of days. But unlike Earth, Jupiter doesn't have a stony, hard surface. In addition, although the air inside Jupiter's clouds is extremely cold, the air outside is extremely hot. Storms have enough energy to rampage for months or even years because of this warm air. The Great Red Storm can, therefore, actually grow a little bit taller as it does so, despite the fact that it is shrinking. It also has enough energy to continue spinning. Additionally, as it collides with nearby storms and winds, we can observe how it is flaking away at the edges. However, it is yet unclear to astronomers whether this will completely eliminate it. Some believe that it could eventually split up into numerous smaller storms. Will we ever discover the secrets of this planet and study it? What would occur if people attempted to set foot on Jupiter? Landing in a new world is the finest way to investigate it. For this reason, people have sent spacecraft to the Moon, Venus, Mars, Titan and other places. But there are regions of the solar system that we will never fully comprehend. Jupiter is among them. Most of the gas that makes up Jupiter is hydrogen and helium. Therefore, attempting to land there would be similar to attempting to do it on a cloud on Earth. On Jupiter, there is no outer crust to cushion your fall. Nothing except an unending expanse of air. So the crucial query is, could you fall through Jupiter and emerge at the other end? You wouldn't even reach halfway, it turns out. This is what would happen if you attempt to land on the gas giant. First things first, there is no oxygen in Jupiter's atmosphere. Therefore, be careful to pack enough air for yourself. The sweltering heat is the next issue, so make sure to bring a fan you are now prepared to embark on an incredible quest. For scale, here's how many Earths you could stack from Jupiter's center. 
As you enter the top of the atmosphere, you'd be traveling at 110,000 miles per hour under the pull of Jupiter's gravity. But prepare yourself. The denser atmosphere below will hit you like a wall when you soon enter it, but it won't be enough to dissuade you. You will arrive 155 miles below the cloud tops in around three minutes. You will feel the full force of Jupiter's rotation here. The planet with the quickest rotation in our solar system is Jupiter. One day, as we mentioned previously, lasts roughly 10 Earth hours. This generates strong winds that can travel at speeds of more than 300 miles per hour throughout the globe. You get to the uppermost point that humans can travel to, around 75 miles below the clouds. The Galileo probe made it this far when it dove into Jupiter's atmosphere in 1995. It only lasted for 58 minutes before losing touch and then collapsing under intense pressure. Nearly a hundred times as much pressure as at Earth's surface exists down here. Additionally, you won't be able to see anything, forcing you to rely solely on tools to get a sense of your environment. By 430 miles down, the pressure is 1,150 times higher. If you were in a spaceship designed like the Trieste submarine, the deepest diving submarine on Earth, you might be able to survive down here. A spacecraft won't be able to survive any deeper because of the pressure and temperature. Let's assume that you might discover a means to go much lower. Some of Jupiter's greatest mysteries will be revealed by you. Sadly, you won't be able to inform anyone. You won't be able to converse since Jupiter's dense atmosphere absorbs radio transmissions, cutting you off from the outer world. Once you've reached 2,500 miles down, the temperature is 6,100 degrees Fahrenheit. The metal with the highest melting point in the universe, tungsten, can melt at temperatures that high. You will have been falling for at least 12 hours at this point. You won't even have reached the halfway point. At 13,000 miles down, you'd reach Jupiter's innermost layer. The pressure is 2 million times greater here than at the surface of the Earth. Furthermore, it is hotter than the Sun's surface. These circumstances are so severe that they alter the hydrogen's composition everywhere around you. Hydrogen molecules are squeezed so closely together that their electrons dislodge, resulting in the formation of metallic hydrogen, an uncommon material. Hydrogen in metallic form is very reflective, so it would be hard for you to use lights to look down. And it has the density of a rock. Therefore, when you descend further, gravity's downward pull is resisted by the buoyant force of the metallic hydrogen. Like a yo-yo, gravity will eventually draw you back down once that buoyancy has shot you back up. You will be stuck in mid-Jupiter free floating, unable to move up or down and with no way out when the two forces equalize. To sum things up, it would be foolish to attempt to land on Jupiter. Who knows what lies beneath those magnificent clouds? However, we may still observe and awe at this enigmatic world from a distance till our technology becomes way more advanced. Well, that's hoping any advanced technology can even help overcome the gas giant's defenses. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.